Welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we're going to be looking at the world of pharmacy. Really interesting area. It is. And we're actually diving into a document that one of our listeners sent in oh. called Orientation to Pharmacy from Suez Canal University. Excellent. Um, and it's Pharmacy 101 material, which I love because it's like getting back to the essentials. Yeah, taking it from the top. Right. So like when I think pharmacy, I immediately think like science. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah, I'm right. like very clinical. Right. But this document starts by saying that pharmacy is both an art and a science. Oh, interesting. And that to me is like, ooh, okay, so where's the creativity come in? Yeah, well, I think you can see that even in the history of pharmacy. Okay. Um, the word pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakon, mm -hmm. which means uh, drug or medicine. And it harkens back to this time when you know, ancient healers were experimenting with plants yeah, and, and kind of natural substances to try and find remedies for, for ailments and things like that. So it's like this blend of ancient wisdom with modern science. That's a really nice way of putting it, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it such a dynamic and interesting field to be involved in. Totally. Um, you know, if you think about it, like what a pharmacist does. Yeah. Interpreting prescriptions, mm -hmm. um, making sure that, you know, they're compounding medications, making sure the patients are getting the right dosages. Right. All of these things seem very straightforward on the surface. Sure. But there's there's this huge well of knowledge that you need to be able to do those things effectively. So it's not just a case of like knowing which pill goes in which bottle. No. And it's and it's understanding that the sort of the deeper side of it, which is the pharmacology of it. OK. So how these drugs interact with the body, right. what the potential side effects are, yeah. how different drugs might interact with each other. Yeah. Um, so they really are the guardians of, of medication safety. I feel like that gives them a much more, um, I don't know, a much more like critical role Absolutely. than and, most people realize. And, and they have that responsibility. Totally. Now, one thing that I think people often get tripped up on is, is the difference between a drug and a medicine. Okay. Because often those two terms are used interchangeably. Yeah. But our document makes a very clear distinction between the two. Okay. So think of a drug as the raw ingredient. Okay. It could be a plant extract. It could be a, a synthetically produced chemical in a lab. Mm -hmm. It could be something that's derived from an animal source. Right. So that's your raw drug. Okay, so what elevates it then to medicine status? It's the formulation. Okay. So it's the way in which we take that active drug and we combine it with other ingredients right. to make it stable, to make it effective, and to make it deliverable. Yeah. Whether that's in a pill form or a capsule or a liquid or whatever it might be. Right. So you're like taking these raw ingredients and crafting like a recipe. Yeah. Except yeah. in this case, the recipe is like, you know, the difference between someone maybe feeling better or or having adverse effects. It really is. And I think that's a great way to kind of illustrate the precision right. and the care that goes into um into pharmacy. Totally. So speaking of ingredients, where do these drugs come from in the first place? Like, I'm assuming it's not as easy as just walking into a, you know, a pharmacy aisle and being like, here's all the raw materials. Well, you're right. It's it's there's a whole world behind the scenes of sourcing these things. Right. Um, and actually, this document outlines uh, six main sources. OK. And, and it starts off with probably the most ancient one, which is plants. Which makes sense. Like, we've been using plants for medicinal purposes for, I mean, centuries. Around Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and still do. Yeah. Um, in fact, about 25% of, of modern medicines today are derived from, from plants. Wow. And this document gives a simple example, which is castor oil, uh -huh. which I'm sure a lot of your listeners have heard of. Yeah. Which is a natural laxative that comes from the castor bean plant. It's so wild to me how something like we find in nature can have such a like potent effect on our bodies. Well, it speaks to the the power of some of these natural compounds, right? Totally. Um, and and it's not just plants. Okay. We get drugs from animals as well. Okay. So, for example, um, insulin, which is used to manage diabetes, right, um, was originally derived from the pancreas of of animals like cows and pigs. Oh wow. I did not know that was how insulin was originally. It's true. Okay. Now, obviously, with, with advances in biotechnology, right. we now have human insulin that's produced through recombinant DNA technology and things like that. Sure. But those those early um, animal-derived insulins were really a, a game changer for, yeah. for people with diabetes. Totally. So, yeah, I mean, that's just to show like how diverse the, the origin of some of these things can be. It's so interesting. And then, of course, we haven't even touched on microorganisms. Right. So a lot of um, like penicillin. 
Exactly. A lot of our most powerful antibiotics are derived from, from bacteria and fungi that are found in the soil. It's like that saying, like, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. But in this case, it's like what can potentially kill you, like, also holds the secret to, like, keeping us alive in other ways. It's a, it's a really nice way of thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, we have synthetic drugs. Okay. So these are drugs that are produced entirely within a lab. So not derived from? Not derived from a natural source. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then we also have semi-synthetic drugs. Okay. So these are drugs that are based on a natural compound, but then they're modified in the lab. Okay. So it's like harnessing what nature gives us, but then like tweaking it. Exactly. It's it's we we take what what nature's given us, and then we're like, okay, how can we kind of improve on this? Right. Yeah. Innovate. Yeah. And then biotechnology. That's a whole other like. It is a whole other can of worms. It really is. Yeah. Um. But it's but it's like essential to so much of like I feel like modern medicine. Absolutely. And especially I would say recombinant DNA technology. Wow. Okay. Which has really um, yeah, revolutionized yeah. drug development over the last sort of. 30 or 40 years. Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest. Recombinant DNA technology sounds a little intimidating. It sounds very, very complicated. Yeah. But essentially what it allows us to do is to produce large quantities of of very complex drugs okay. that previously were either very difficult right. or, or even impossible to obtain. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we go back to our insulin example, yeah. that's a great, um, a great way of kind of illustrating that because, you know, yeah. Recombinant DNA technology allows us to produce human insulin. Right. Which is um, a much purer and a more reliable source of insulin okay. than we were able to get from, from animal sources. That's incredible. Like when you think about how far we've come yeah. and, and like how, how this technology, it's like shaping the future of medicine. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is really cutting edge stuff. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about like the raw materials, we've talked about kind of how we get them. Yeah. But I think one of the things that is always very confusing, at least to me, is drug names. Okay. Have you ever, like, looked at a medication label and been like, why are there three different names? Happens all the time, yeah. Yes. It's like the secret code I need to crack every time I go to the pharmacy. Yeah, it can be very, very confusing, especially for patients. So what our document does is it breaks it down and it says, okay, well, a single drug can have multiple different names. Right. It can have a chemical name, it can have a generic name, and it can have a brand name. And each name serves a different purpose. Exactly. Okay. So the the chemical name, that's like the the most complex name. Right. Um, And it describes in great detail the drug's chemical structure. Okay. So that's really important for chemists who are, you know, synthesizing these drugs. Sure. But for the average person on the street, it's pretty meaningless. Right, it's like a bunch of letters and numbers, and you're like, I don't yeah. know what this means. It means very little, yeah. Okay, so what about generic? Because I feel like I hear that word tossed around a lot. So the generic name is the name that you you want to be familiar with. Okay. Because that's the name that's that's recognized um, by healthcare professionals all over the world. Okay. So no matter where you are, right. if you use the generic name, then the doctor or the pharmacist is going to know what you're talking about. That makes a lot more sense. And in fact, our document gives the example of right. acetaminophen and paracetamol, which are the same. Right. They're both the generic names. But one is... Well, one's used in the U.S. Yeah. And one's used in other parts of the world. So it's the same active ingredient. It's just they've decided to call it exactly. something they're different. Slightly different names, yeah. So then what about brand names? So the brand name is the one that, that trips people up. Okay. And... and I think this is where a lot of the confusion arises. So yeah. the brand name is the name that's given to the drug by the company that makes it. So like Tylenol is a brand name exactly. for acetaminophen. Acetaminophen, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm starting to get it. Like it's the same thing, but they're just choosing to call it whatever they want. Exactly. And, you know, they come up with these catchy names. Right. Easy to remember. Good for marketing. Right. Tylenol is a lot easier to remember than, Absolutely. you know, whatever the chemical name is. But it can create a lot of confusion, yeah. particularly for patients, because, you know, you might go to a pharmacy and say, you know, I need this drug. And they say, well, we don't carry that brand. Right. But they might actually have the exact same drug. Right. Just a different name. Just under a different brand name. Yeah. So, so as a patient, like knowing your generic name is actually like pretty important. It's really empowering yeah. because it means you can go into any pharmacy right. and say, I need this drug. This is my prescription. 
and and they'll know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're not reliant on remembering like, oh, was it this brand or was it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It right. gives you more control over your own kind of health outcomes as well. This has been such a good reminder for me at least that like yeah. there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of just like taking a pill. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, so much. It's like I never really stop to think about like, oh, where did this come from? How did it like get formulated? What are all the different names it could be called? And I think and I think a lot of people feel the same way. And that's totally understandable. Right. Um, and that's why I think it's so important to have these kinds of conversations. Totally. And and also to highlight, you know, the the really important role that pharmacists play in all of this. Right. Because again, we think of it as, oh, you just go to the pharmacy, you pick up your prescription. Yeah. But there's a lot of like decision making that goes into that. Oh, there's so many different factors that the pharmacist has to take into account. Right. They're looking at your individual patient factors. Right. Like allergies or if you're Exactly. Any other medic medications or... that you're on, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like Potential drug interactions, they're... making sure that the medication and the dosage is appropriate. Right. Because it's not like a one size fits all. No, not at all. Any of this stuff. So, you know, they're they're like detectives almost. Totally. You know, piecing together this information yeah. to make sure that you're getting the best and safest treatment possible. And that is so important, especially as there's, you know, more drugs being developed, more treatment options. All the time, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, having that pharmacist there who is really up to date on the latest research and latest developments right. is absolutely crucial. I love that we did this deep dive because I feel like, one, it's made me appreciate pharmacists a lot more. <laughs> I'm glad. And two, I feel like I've just learned so much about kind of the process of, you know, like I said, like from the ancient roots of pharmacy to like the all the complexities of drug names. Yeah, and it's all important. It is. And, and one of the things that I thought was really fascinating in this document was this idea that even tiny, tiny changes to a drug structure can have significant effects. Oh wow! On the way that it works in the body. Really? Yeah. It's it's, and I think that just speaks to the incredible complexity totally. of of this field. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's we're talking about things happening at a molecular level here, right? Which is just it's mind blowing. It really is. It's like a good reminder that those little pills we take are like very powerful. They are very powerful and should not be taken lightly. Exactly. You know, always consult with a healthcare professional before you start any new medication. Absolutely. I think that's a great place to to wrap up this yeah. deep dive. I think so too. Be sure to check out all of our previous deep dives wherever you get your podcasts. Yes. And until next time, stay curious.